I'll take your kids from you because of your heart condition. Because I kept passing out a lot during my pregnancy, I lost my daughter. That was a lot on me. Sometimes I feel like heart disease for me was a blessing and a curse. Um, sometimes it's hard to figure out why I call it a blessing. A lot of times I just sit around and I think maybe it's just a curse. What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl G Baby. B, that's G dot B A B I I. And if you don't want to call me G Baby, then you already know you can call me the seventh letter in the alphabet. So, you guys, welcome back to my channel and happy new year! Oh my god, you guys, it is 2020 freaking three. And I'm still the same OG I was in 2022, baby. Period. But. I'm super excited to be here, you guys, um, posting another video. Actually, my new year did not start off so great. Um, I was actually sick, and I went from being sick to actually being in the hospital, <laughs> and now I'm here. I'm back. I'm better. I'm doing good, and, you know, it is what it is. I'm just thankful to be here. I'm thankful that God helped me see another year. And you should be thankful that God helped you be here for another year, too, because that itself is a blessing, okay? Anyways, you guys, being in the hospital and all that kind of stuff kind of made me just want to chit chat with you guys about, like, me in general. Um, If you guys haven't seen my very, well, it's not my first video. It is my first introduction video, my first video that I actually started talking about myself and things about me. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, then go ahead and check it out. And if you have already seen that video, then you guys already know that I suffer from a heart condition. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that in this video. I'm also going to be talking about my first time actually having a crisis and how all that went. And uh, like some things that happened to me in my life because of my heart condition. And it's been a lot. But, you know, like I said, I'm just blessed because God favors me, period. I already know he does because I wouldn't be here, like I said before. So, yeah, you guys, pretty much all my life, I have went through, like, having chest pains. But at the time, we didn't 100% know what was going on or what was wrong. Um... For example, sometimes I wanted to play sports and I could try out for that sport and I had to do the physical and I would pass that physical with flying colors. And other times I could try out for sports and have to do a physical and I would basically be like told, no, you cannot play this sport due to your heart being all over the place, your heart rate just everywhere. And I never understood it or understood the like whole backstory of what was causing this situation to go on growing up most of my life nor did my mama she didn't really know what was going on none of us knew what was wrong we just know that i had a lot of chest pains and things like that as i was growing up um i was never diagnosed as a little girl with anything so i didn't know that it was anything wrong with me until later on in life. So you guys, I was actually at school when I had my very first crisis. Um, I was in class and it was the day that we supposed to be taking a test. So I don't really know what happened. I just had a lot of chest pain. Um, I actually told my teacher I had a lot of chest pain and she just told me to get up and kind of like walk around, walk it off or whatever. When I stood up, to walk around I instantly felt very dizzy and lightheaded like automatically I didn't know what was going on I just felt very dizzy and lightheaded um I started trying to walk around and she noticed what was going on and she told me you know maybe you should go get you some water 
from the water fountain, which was like by the bathroom and the hallway. So I walked to the hallway and as I walked up the hallway to go get something to drink, I just decided to go in the bathroom. So I went in the bathroom and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm literally just looking at myself in the mirror. And you guys, I do not remember anything from that moment other than looking in the mirror. Um, I had passed out. My heart had stopped. When I say my heart stopped, I have a condition that makes my heart, like, my blood doesn't flow to my heart fast enough to keep my heart pumping fast enough. And it also keeps my blood from flowing to my brain, which is making me dizzy. So, it made my heart stop for a moment. It usually stops for that moment and then it picks back up extremely fast. This is how this happens for me. Um, I cannot control when it happens. I do not know when it's going to happen. Sometimes I will feel very dizzy or I feel like, I don't know how to explain it. Like I feel very lightheaded or dizzy and that's just sometimes. Sometimes I have chest pain and sometimes I have nothing. I could just be having a regular day and this could happen to me. Um, but this day I actually was having chest pain and then I automatically felt very lightheaded when I had got up. Like I said, I passed out. I was 100% unconscious in the bathroom. So I had no idea what had happened to me. Um, I don't remember a thing. I can't even tell you what happened. I don't remember a thing. Um, what I can tell you is what I was told. My mom told me that she was actually called by the school and they told her that I had passed out. They also had called the ambulance. The ambulance hadn't made it there and my mom beat the ambulance there, you guys. My mom actually knows CPR first aid, all that. So her first instinct was to help me and she did. Uh, I don't remember her helping me. I don't remember anything that actually took place at all. She just told me that she was the person and other people told me as well that she was the person who came in and helped me get consciousness again. Um, the ambulance hadn't showed up. Uh, when the ambulance did show up, I don't remember anything. I don't even remember getting on the stretcher. I don't, I don't remember any of that. I do remember waking up in the, well, I don't know if I was already woke. Like I said, from what I can remember, I was in the back of the ambulance. When I was in the back of the ambulance, um, I could see out the window and I was asking a lot of questions like, what's going on? Am I okay? And it was like very calm with me. Um, they told me like, you know, you had passed out, you had a syncope episode and things like that. I could look out the back window and I actually seen my mom like right behind the ambulance in her car at that time. Uh, I got to the hospital and when I got to the hospital, the hospital people really didn't check too much on me, you guys. I sat in the hallway for a very long time because there was no rooms. And then I actually got in a room and once I got in that room, the staffing pretty much came in, asked me some questions like, are you pregnant? Are you having a baby? And I'm like, no. No, bitch. I didn't have any kids at this time. I was still a teenager, so I didn't have any kids. I didn't have none of that going on. So I'm like, no, I know for a fact I'm not pregnant. I know for a fact I'm not at all. So that was pretty much the main thing they was worried about. Like, are you pregnant? You need to take a pregnancy test, all that kind of stuff. My pregnancy test, of course, came back negative. I was not pregnant. And they automatically was asking me, like, was it because you was having a test today? Like, I think it might be anxiety and all that kind of stuff. And they automatically just told my mom I passed out because I had anxiety. My mom was like, okay. I was like, okay. We let it go. <laughs> that was my very first time passing out, you guys. And the craziest thing was, as I sat in this hospital bed, I actually logged in on Facebook. And what killed me was every single person was like, rest in peace, G-Baby. And I'm like, what did y'all talk about? I'm not dead. Uh, I guess the kids at school automatically assumed that I had died. I did not die. And that was so crazy, returning back and having to explain, like, I'm not dead. Where did this rumor come about? I'm not dead. Uh, that... 
Reading messages about you being dead is very, 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 very depressing. Like, it literally hurts. It is so sad. People should not say people is dead until they know facts. That's all I'm going to say because, yeah, that really hurt. Um, even though people were saying very nice things about me, it's just the fact I was not dead. I don't want to read what you would say about me if I was dead when I'm alive. So, yeah, I didn't like that. That, that was pretty horrible. So, not too much longer after that, you guys, I passed out again. Um, it was maybe like a month later, I passed out again. Um, yeah, I was rushed to the hospital, and this time I wasn't waited in, like, the hall. I got put in a room, and they did some EKGs, and they started running tests and seeing what was going on. Because they was pretty much sure at this point that I was not just passing out due to the fact that they thought I was stressed or I was having anxiety attacks. Um, at this point, they needed to know what was going on. Um, yeah, long story short, because there's a lot to this story, a lot of details as far as what happened. I did eventually take a tilt test, and that's how they found out that my blood wasn't flowing to my heart and brain fast enough, which was causing me to pass out the way I passed out. And yeah, that's how I found out about my whole heart condition. Having heart disease as a teenager, because I found out when I was a teenager, was extremely hard for me. Because when you're a teenager, teenagers don't comprehend things the way they should. Well, some of them, a lot of them did, and a lot of them didn't. Um, wow. Uh, it was really hard for me because I went from having a lot of people around me to watching those people fade away from around me due to the fact that I just told them, like, yeah, I got heart disease. Uh, I don't know. I guess the comprehending the part of heart disease is not something that you can transmit to somebody or give to somebody or something that someone gave to me. I think people just blocked out everything and heard the word disease and they're like, oh my God. And I'm like, that's not, that's not what that means, people. It's not that that's not what that means. <laughs> um, even my my ex, he just he confirmed also that at the time when I very first told him like I got heart disease, he was also like, okay, what is going on? I don't want to be dealing with somebody who have a disease, and I'm like, this is not something that you can get from me. This is something that I deal with. This. This is not this is not something that I can transmit to you like oh it was it was hard like the dealing with what people said about you just because they didn't quite understand was very hard it was hard yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't wish that on nobody that that was not an easy thing for me to go through, especially being a teenager. It was it was just not. I never kept my heart disease a secret. I didn't feel like it was something that I had to hide from people or not talk about. Um, I recently just stopped talking about the fact that I have a heart condition due to the fact that someone very, they're not close to me, but you know, in my circle said something to me like I'll take your kids from you because of your heart condition uh, because of this I did stop talking about my heart condition on social media not because I thought this person could take my kids but because can't nobody take my kids from me I'm one thing I know I'm a good mom I take really great care of my kids I do whatever I can to see them happy um, 
he knows I do whatever I can for those kids to be happy. Um, so the fact that that was said to me was kind of heartbreaking, even though I now I don't expect nothing less from that person, but it's just the fact that it was said to me. It, it made me 100% look at that person differently. My daughter asked me, you know, like, not to look at that person differently. And I tried. I'm not going to lie to you and say I didn't try. I tried. But now I'm at the point in my life where I'm just like, mm, I don't know if I can forgive everything that, that's been happening recently. Um, yeah. Like I said, that's a story for another day, you guys. Um, I was actually pregnant with twins with Kalani. It was Kalani and Kamori. I would have three daughters instead of two because I kept passing out a lot during my pregnancy. I lost my daughter. I don't know for a while, you guys. I actually blamed myself because I lost my daughter. I don't know. I just kind of felt like if I hadn't been passing out, or if I hadn't been going through the stuff I was going through, that, you know, like, I would still have her. That was a lot on me. Um, yeah, that, that was a lot. But, you know, I got through it. I did have to talk to my mom a lot about it, but I got through. I'm sorry y'all, I'm back. Um, like I said, I lost my daughter due to me having my heart disease. Um, I actually teach my other two daughters a lot about their sister in heaven. And I look at her like my angel and the person who just helped me get through things now. Um, at the time when it happened, I don't know. I just didn't expect that to happen because I was told I was told at the beginning that that they seen two kids and I was told that it possibly was a boy and a girl. And I was excited because I really wanted a boy, you guys. I always wanted me a boy, but I ended up with girls. <laughs> um then later on they told me that I had one baby, not two babies, and they only seen one baby. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was fine with it. They told me there was a girl. And, you know, I was going on with just the thought of a Kalani at that point. Um, later on, maybe like right before I was about to give birth, I was told that I had two kids again. And I'm like, okay. Um, they also told me that my baby had died so yeah I had to deal with that um finding out my baby died was like I don't know I didn't know how to process the fact that my baby had died and especially the reasoning behind why my baby had died Sometimes I feel like heart disease for me was a blessing and a curse. Um, sometimes it's hard to figure out why I call it a blessing. A lot of times I just sit around and I think maybe it's just a curse. Um, I cannot drive. I have never had a driver's license. They will not let me get driver's license due to the fact that I can pass out, out of anywhere. They don't really know. When I'm going to pass out, why I pass out, what's going on, and because of that, I cannot get behind a steering wheel and drive, which I understand for safety purposes for myself and other people on the road. So I never had driver's license. Um, I always wanted it. Like, I want to be able to drive. Who don't want to be able to drive somewhere? So I don't get to drive myself places and you know, I deal with that, and it's okay. Uh, I have a really good support system between my brother and my mom, and they pretty much take me back and forth everywhere I need to go, and I'm, I don't really have a problem with 
getting back and forth places as y'all can see it was never a problem it just sometimes you'd be like i want to have my own independence to do things my own way and i can't um yeah that that is a lot like you want to have your own everything and do things your own way and especially when you live like a type of life where you like I want to be on the go all the time and I want to do things my own way because that's just me I'm always been that type of person and it's like I got limits to things that I can and can't do although I do not let my heart disease stop me from doing anything I want to do anything I want to do I feel like I'm capable of doing it regardless um I also because of this it has my blood levels low. Sometimes my legs feel like bricks. I can't get up to walk around because my blood is sitting towards the bottom of my body. So it makes my legs swell up, my feet swell up. Um, it makes my body weight go up and down. Some days I'm skinnier, some days I gain my weight. And then on top of that, the foods they want me to eat is like, salty foods to help my blood levels and popcorn potato chips liver uh beets all this type of stuff to like help my heart sometimes that stuff also doesn't always help kind of make my blood pressure be up down it's it's a lot so you know like i said i would not wish this on anyone i know it's other people in the world who go through what i go through but it's a very hard process. I'm, I'm pretty sure all of us, everybody who has a heart condition, um, I just feel like it's been extremely hard on me. Especially, I think the, the worst part for me is that I had to find out as a teenager that this was going on with me. I feel like if I would have found out now in my life, my age that I am now, that I probably would have processed it a lot better. But then and processing it was not, it was not easy. Uh, the fact that people had so much to say, and of course people still gonna have things to say. I don't really care about what people have to say now, but then it was a lot. Now, if you somebody who in my circle, somebody who called me a family member or somebody who really close to me like a friend and you say something regarding it, yeah, it's going to make me feel some type of way. But like strangers on the street, you don't know me. So that don't really bother me if somebody on the street says something about it. It's more that the people who are around me in my face. I really don't have too many people in my face now who, at all anyway, but who will say something or do something like that, I really don't. So I'm really blessed that God kind of took those people away from being around me. Like, God removed the people who had so much to say and who kept throwing that up in my face. And I'm really glad that he did because it is stressful enough going through what you go through and then having those people who feel like I can hold this over your head and I can say whatever I want to say about your situation towards you that's a lot so when God removed those people it's a blessing and I'm really glad that God showed me everybody's true colors who was around me and removed those people out of my life but yeah you guys each one of my tattoos have a meaning they are all flowers each and every one of them that I have on my body are flowers and this one is actually an uh, actual heart with flowers on it um, the meaning of my tattoos are about my heart disease um, every flower y'all know flowers die down and with a lot of love care and attention they blossom back and they are still beautiful and that's how I feel like it I am and what I go through so each one of my tattoos is from a very extreme moment I went through in my life and I have a flower for each one of those um I actually have to go get two more because two other things happen in my life that I need to actually 
have a tattoo for, so I'm going to go get two more flowers for sure that I know of. So yeah, that's the meaning behind all my tattoos being flowers. Every single tattoo I have on my body is a flower and that is why. My heart tattoo is actually a flower and a heart due to the fact that if something does occur to me in the street while my mom can't come around or I can't get in touch with someone, I'm hoping um, that it's a warning tattoo to let people know that I do have a heart condition. Um, I noticed someone else had did it in the past, so I went and got this tattoo. I think I was like... I was in my 20s when I got this, but I got this so that way if something does happen, then you could look at, I, it was a TV show, I was watching a TV show, and it was like, I can't remember what it was, it might have been an episode of, I don't know y'all, I watch a lot of TV shows like The Residence, 911, all that kind of stuff, but it was a TV show and this dude had a tattoo about something with his heart. And he had a heart condition. So I went, and that's how they knew that he had a heart condition. So I went and got a tattoo about my heart condition. So hopefully it will let people know if something did happen to me. It was your warning sign that, yeah, she got a heart condition. And hopefully that could be what can save my life one day. But yeah, you guys, like I said, I pass out randomly different places one time i passed out inside of a store you guys i passed out at the store and again my mom got there and made sure i was okay my mom and my kids got there and they made sure i was okay um actually the craziest thing is i don't remember what happened how i passed out how i got in that situation but i actually remember this is how long this took you guys i remember coming to and actually seeing my mom, my kids, the staff at the Dollar General, um, the ambulance never showed up. So, yeah, that's crazy. Where I live, a lot of times the ambulance just takes forever to come or they don't show up. A lot of times I get seen by the fire department more than the ambulance. So, that's crazy. But I get through it. And I'm really blessed that my mom is certified in CPR first aid and all that kind of stuff. And she actually makes sure I'm okay all the time. I'm really blessed to have my mom anyway, you guys. Because while I'm in the hospital, in and out of the hospital, she is the person who take care of my kids. She have my kids. She don't complain. She'll take off of work if she have to to be there with my kids while I'm going through my crisis. Like, it's never a problem to her. She never made it seem like it's a problem to her. So I'm really grateful to have her. And I'm blessed to have a mom like I have. Even though I'm a full-grown woman, my mama has still always had my back. And I appreciate her for that. Even though she might not realize it, but I do. I really appreciate her for that because it could be just me, you know. And I, it's not like that. It's not. So... I really do appreciate her for all the things she do for me. Y'all, this video been so emotional for me. Like, oh my God, I can't even finish it. I keep crying and then I have to stop the video. Then I have to clean my face up. Then I come back and record something else. <laughs> like, no, it's just it's just a lot. Like, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard for me to talk about it. And sometimes it's easy for me to talk about it. It's kind of just, uh, it's a lot. Uh, it also makes me, I don't know. I just feel... Some days I feel like it's so much pressure on me to just be who I am. Like, I don't know, I feel like I feel like I go through this depression of feeling like I'll never be able to do all the things that I want to do. But I feel like at the same time I'm so capable of doing all the things I want to do. It's just, I feel like it's holding me back, it's holding me back. And then I have to be like... Don't use that for an excuse to say it's holding you back. Just do what you want to do. And I don't know. It's just, it just feels like a lot. It feels like a lot. And I feel like some days I feel like I'm carrying it all by myself. 
and I know I'm not, but that's how I feel. I feel like I'm carrying it all by myself. Carrying and trying to get through chest pains all day and be a mom, take care of my kids, do everything I gotta do for them, you know, and oh, uh, oh my God, y'all, I am not a crier. I don't know why I keep crying. Forgive me, forgive me. Oh. <laughs> But anyway, you guys, if it's anybody out there who is going through a heart condition or anything, you guys, I don't know what could be going on in your life. Nobody knows what's going on in my life. They just assume everything's picture perfect from the outside looking in. And it's not, you guys. You really don't know what somebody is going through or how they get by, what's going on in their life. Especially if you're going through something like I go through. Or your own issue that you go through health-wise or mentally, physically. You really don't know what someone is going through. So if you are going through something like I'm going through, just know you are not alone. You are not the only person who feel that way. You know, try to find somebody to talk to. My person that I talk to is my mom. Like I told you, I'm usually with my mom 24-7. <laughs> and like I said, I'm a grown woman. I'm still with my mom all the time it's just somebody i like being with um her and my daughters they are just like everything to me so yeah if you are going through things like i'm going through make sure you have somebody you can talk to um if you don't have nobody to talk to you can talk to me you can talk to me we can talk to each other you know don't don't be scared to talk to me you can send me your messages. We can talk. Um, but yeah, just make sure you have somebody to talk to. Me. I know it's a lot. I know it puts you through a lot. It takes you through a lot. You have to be a strong person to just keep moving forward. That's the only thing you can keep doing. It's just keep moving forward. Tell yourself that every day. When you wake up and you look in the mirror, tell yourself, it just keep moving forward because God ain't going to put more on you than you can handle. And it's going to be okay. And I tell myself that every day. And it's been okay. It ain't perfect, but it's okay. So, yeah, you guys, this is what it's like for me. I know this video is kind of choppy. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. Like I said, this was a lot for me to talk about. So yeah but i'm gonna just say this a wrap for this video because i just feel like i'm gonna start crying again so i'm wishing y'all a whole bunch of peace love and blessings and remember if it ain't about the bag we ain't stressing it period